In this video, let us see about the construction of alternator, operation, al difference between alternator and DC generator and what are the advantages of having stationary armature in alternator. What is a AC generator? We know an electric generator is a machine that converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. Already we have seen about DC generator. DC generator will give you DC output. AC generator or alternator which is otherwise called as alternator is a machine which produces an alternating current. Next we will see the construction of an alternator. Like any other machine, it has two major parts, stator, the stationary part and rotor, the rotating part. Here we can see that the stator, it has three windings and the rotor has a field winding which should be given a DC voltage. So, so, the stator has the armature winding and rotor has the field winding. Now, we will see the difference between alternator that is AC generator and DC generator. So, in AC generator, we have seen there are three phase winding on its stator and a field winding on its rotor. In DC generator, just opposite. What we have in stator, we have the field winding that is this field poles will be stationary and the armature winding will be rotating in the magnetic field which is just opposite to the AC generator. So, here stator we have field winding and in rotor we have the armature winding. Let us see the advantage of having stationary armature. From this diagram we can see that the stator is stationary and the output terminals are taken out from it directly. Since the stator is stationary, the output current can be taken directly without passing through the brush contact. In DC generator, we will be taking the output from the rotating armature terminals. It will be passed through a commutator and brushes to take the electrical output. And moreover, here the armature coils are stationary. So, insulating the armature coils is very easy because at high voltage, insulation will be difficult if it is rotating. And here, we are giving the DC supply to the field winding. So, only two slip rings are required for DC supply. And since the DC excitation current is very small, the slip rings and the brush gear required are of very light construction. First let us see about the stator. This is the constructional view of the three phase alternator. So we can see here the stator frame is the outermost part which protects the stator core or the armature core. And there are slots to keep the uh, stator windings. And this uh, armature core consists of three phase armature winding. So, three armature winding which are displaced by 120 degree. One end of the windings are connected in star and the other end are brought out for taking the output. And if we see the rotor, uh, this rotor you can see here it is like a flywheel having alternate north pole and south pole. So, if this is north pole, this will be south pole. The poles of the rotor are energized by a DC supply which can be 125 volt to 600 volt. And this DC excitation voltage is given through slip rings. There are two types of rotor. One is the salient pole rotor. Another one is called cylindrical rotor. Salient pole means it's projecting. 
salient means projecting so you can see here the poles are projecting whereas this one has a cylindrical shape so depending upon the requirement we can use um, this rotor or cylindrical rotor the salient pole rotor is used for slow and medium driven alternators so we can see the projecting poles are here which is attached to this wheel like structure and they have a large diameter and a short axial length the cylindrical type rotor is preferred for steam turbine driven alternators which run at very high speed there is a, a greater uh, advantage in having the cylindrical structure because they give better balance quieter operation and the vintage loss will also be less when you have a cylindrical rotor and these rotors are characterized by large axial length and small diameter let us see the operation of the alternator first give the dc supply to the rotor so that alternative north and south poles will be formed so you have the magnetic flux is created now we have to make this rotor rotate so for that you need a prime mover using a prime mover we can rotate this rotor so once the rotor starts rotating the magnetic flux will cut the stationary armature conductors so emf will be induced and current starts to flow in the armature conductors as the rotor poles are alternatively north and south the induced emf will also be alternating in nature the frequency of the induced emf is given by f equal to pn by 120 where p is the number of poles and n is the speed of the rotor in rpm here you can see Uh, the rotor has eight poles whereas in this case the rotor has two poles so now we can see what is the influence of poles on the frequency of the output so when uh, the stator winding is under a north pole if it is producing a high pulse and or a positive pulse when it comes under south pole it will produce a negative pulse so alternatively here four north poles and four south poles are there so your output will be four cycles will be there so for a eight pole machine this is the frequency whereas in case of a two pole motor this will be the frequency of the output because in one rotation only one time this uh, stator winding comes under a north pole and the direction of the induced emf is given by fleming's right hand rule so the points to remember about alternator is that ac generator is otherwise called as an alternator that is a machine which produces an alternating current in its stator it has the armature winding and rotor it has the field winding this structure is just opposite to that of a dc generator there are two types of rotor salient pole rotor and cylindrical rotor the frequency of the induced emf is given by f equal to pn divided by 120 where p is the number of poles and n is the speed in rpm if you like the material do subscribe to read electric vehicle channel thank you